Hello, I'm Rodney Williams, CEO and co-founder of Listener. I think today you've seen some amazing companies and technologies, but I do believe there are a few moments where you get to experience something that could potentially change everything. I would like to introduce you to the new communication standard to connect devices. A new standard that we created, launched, and is about to get a whole lot more powerful. We believe, and I think many of you in this room, that our smartphone screen is still and will be for a very long time the most important screen to any fan, any consumer, and any viewer. The reality of how we interact with that screen tends to be a challenge. Here's a list of technologies that are essentially trying to touch that screen where it matters. So you guys may be familiar with fingerprinting or watermarking solution, takes a snippet of audio, checks a server, and then responds, takes significant data, server costs, um, to, to make that possible. And it will never actually synchronize content like you always want it to. Beacons or Bluetooth, these are hardware extensive type of ways to connect devices. I like to say, what if we were to replace all of these use cases by using sound? The internet of sound is here, and we're pioneering that. What we've created are smart tones, just above the human hearing level, so the completely silent, high-frequency audio that allows customized packets of data to be delivered every second. Essentially, we've created high-frequency data over audio. It's completely receptive to any microphone device, so wearable or smartphone, and it can be broadcast by any speaker. It's extremely efficient, reliable, and it's here today. I'm going to walk through two examples of how I'm going to bring that to life. One is synchronization. That second screen, I think, is still extremely untapped because no one has done that in a scalable way. We can synchronize content to one-eighth of a second in accuracy. So our tones, essentially talking to a device, could tell it what to do extremely fast. The second demo I'm going to show is us taking audio and making a cable box connected, uh, very, very simply. So no Bluetooth chip, no iBeacon, uh, just audio. So this, this tablet I have is currently sitting in airplane mode. It's not connected to Wi-Fi or, or any others. But I'm going to play tones in this room today and synchronize that screen. And uh, if you're a baseball player, hopefully you can play along with me. So you're sitting on the couch. You're enjoying your favorite baseball game. And what if your device, the moment lines up a fastball, it vibrates, and you unlock this customized experience? So what you guys are experiencing right now on stage is live second screen synchronization. Fingerprinting watermarking can't do that because I'm actually talking over the audio. All right? Uh, it's synchronizing it to one eighth of a second. So think replays. Think enhanced TV. Think of anything that you want to activate, trigger, or connect the second screen is now possible. One of the powerful things about this technology is that once it's been embedded in a live broadcast, once it's been attached to the piece of content, it lives forever. So you could enjoy this days later via DVR. I mean, you've pretty much created an experience that is tied to that content forever. I'm going to go through another example. This well. is actually <laughs> live in market today. Still using both. The last Despite five James's episodes optimism, of Mythbusters no have our technology encoded the into the content. There's an app called Headrush that anyone wrong. of you guys can it's download, we were and they have a synchronized quiz experience. Really perfect clip. Um, they used but us because they needed this the to be accurate. Uh, it couldn't be delayed we like Shazam. It had to tell the app exactly the moment in which it was in that show and have some type of interactivity. Three or four seconds of no Within the first week, Remember, received Adam over 30,000 downloads, 140,000 quiz answer, questions answered, 467,000 listens of five way. episodes. And to, to be honest, it, it wasn't even distributed across its entire viewership, only about 70%. But it's extremely powerful when you can synchronize content 
uh, to show something uh, pretty powerful. And I have a test tablet that you see that actually responded to that content as well. I don't know if you guys are Adele fans, but hopefully it's enlighten up the mood a bit. <laughs> um, and let's go to another scenario. I'm home. Oh, imagine this happens. Imagine your X1 cable box gives you an error. And it broadcasts a tone where you could just open up your favorite cable app. The app recognizes the error code, automatically contacts customer service, and completes the entire customer service cycle. This is just software and audio. Think about the cost savings and the consumer benefit. This is something we can do extremely, extremely uh, easy. And we actually built a full production demo that we can show you later today, or in the tech stadium. So how are we making all of this possible? Our tones can be broadcast from any speaker. It can be overlaid on any content. It could be embedded in firmware. It can live on any device. And when our SDK is part of an application, it simply decodes and responds, whether it's customized packets of data or some level of response trigger, opening up an app. There's a laundry list of things you can do when you have an active connection. As a company, we spent the last four years creating a commercial and enterprise-grade smart tone, and the world's first and only smart tone with the ability to deliver this amount of customizable packets of data. We spent time focusing on error correction, data throughput, detection time, survivability, regardless of the filter, codec, or whatever it is you're using. And we've proved it in market that it works and there's significant value. And you can see some of the companies that we either have business development relationships or who have invested or who are a part of this goal of going after that second screen. I, I wanted to show you guys this slide, because this is where we're trying to go. We want to help connect devices everywhere. There's always a challenge with a very efficient way to connect devices in each one of these verticals. You know, in the banking industry, we're turning ATM machines and making them connected without additional hardware. So software-based connections. You know, in stadiums where you have limited data connectivity, they're using our tones to trigger engagement, regardless if that phone is connected to that Wi-Fi network or cellular connectivity. And I think in broadcast, we can finally own the most important screen to, I think, our generation. So I leave you all with a challenge and a goal. Help us turn and own that second screen. You guys are experts at the big screen. But I think the companies that are going to continue to progress are going to create connections, both screens, and turn them into powerful ways to touch consumers. Thank you.